Hey everybody, Renaissance Man here, Ray, Renaissance Man, whatever you want to call me. Today I am setting up a QYT 8900D. Alright, now, this is a dual band from China. It basically has four different standby channels, if you would, for lack of a better description. Uh, you know, it it's worth kind of what you paid for it, except there's one bug in this radio that I'm still trying to figure out, and that is scanning. So, it comes with the... Um, you know, it comes with a nice microphone with the keypad. And, I mean, it's not a bad looking radio. It has decent output power. I believe it has um, 25 watts on high and 20 watts on low, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, hey, who am I to argue with the Chinese? You know what I'm saying? The bug in this radio is it doesn't in its when it's doing a scan routine it doesn't seem to stop on activity. So I've tried all kinds of workarounds and I think what's going on here is I think it needs a firmware update and the Chinese have yet to put that out so I'm going to treat this as a radio where it's a dual band, you know, mobile radio. And I can put in the repeaters and, and the stuff that I like and then just have them all on the display. And then if I want to work a certain type of machine, I, I change from A, B, C, or D. What I'm in the process of doing right now is... I am checking out machines that are within 50 miles of here, okay? So I just wanted to show you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to show it to you with the radio, doing it manually, and then I'm going to show the software that you can get with this radio, and of course, the programming cable that you're going to need for this guy, which is, give me just a second here, you've got your, you know, you've got your USB at one end, and then on the other end is basically a, uh, which what looks like a stereo plug, tip, ring, and sleeve, okay, so that goes into the data, the data port you know, the data jack in the back of the radio. So, 80 some bucks from China, cheap and dirty, just the way I like it. And let's see if we can, you know, it works. I mean, it, it works, it sounds okay. Uh, I was doing some research and apparently the, the microphone element that's in the microphone housing is like behind the keypad and the circuit board so you know the audio is going to sound kind of caca but you know 80 bucks there you go dual bander all right it works so here's what we're going to do we're going to load up a um we're going to load up a freak and see what we got here. So I've got 147030. So I, you know, I switched it obviously to VFO mode. There's a, a button right here. There's V slash M. So it's VFO. I'll catch up to you uh, later on. Uh... Or, you know, uh, memory mode. So right now we're in VFO mode. So I've got the, um, I got the freak uh, that. I would hear the repeater on. 
and now I'm going to punch in the PL tone which in this case is a 1035 so that's menu 13 okay and then you hit uh, menu again and I'm going to key in 1035 that seems to make it easier and then I'm going to hit menu again and then exit okay now I'm going to try to kerchunk the repeater I, I don't know if I'm mag minus or positive but we'll, I'll show you how to get to that point so let's try to kerchunk it alright so I'm, I'm minus shift because when you can you can see when the when it transmits, you can see which frequency it's transmitting on. So, 147030, and it's transmitting 146430. Okay, so let's go in the uh, opposite direction. That would be menu 46. So, we're going to hit menu again, and then we're going to change that to a plus sign menu again to lock it up and then exit all right now let's see if we can hit it okay so i'm going to chalk that up to not there okay that just that machine's not there all right what i'm using is i'm using to make this process a little easier is Repeater book. Repeater book is an app that you can download. It's for free. So repeater book. And you can go in and you can set it up for you know the the kind of machines you want, you know, 10 meter, 6 meter, 2 meter, 440, blah 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 blah. And then you can tell it distance. Okay, so sort by distance, max distance, let's say 50 miles, okay? So that's what I'm using. So it's telling me machines that are, you know, nearest to furthest, okay? And then all I'm doing is um, transferring those down to a piece of paper, and then basically I'm just going through and you know punching in the freaks and no I'm not punching out any freaks I'm punching in the freaks hitting the PL tone and then see if it hits the repeater so you know not not everything is up to date you know unfortunately sometimes guys drop machines so it is what it is so now let's go to the next one just to show you what we're going to do is we're going to do a direct entry, so 147375. 147375, and then you got to put the, the tailing zero. Um, it's got a 1035 PL tone, so we're going to go menu, 13, menu again, and it shows 1035. Exit. All right, let's see if we can kerchunk that machine. All right. So, uh, I don't have the pluses and minus memorized. I used two years ago, so uh, I don't know what to tell you. Print it out, stick it up on the wall so you can see it. Menu. 46 now menu and I'm going to change it to a minus offset uh, let's see if we can hit it now nothing okay now we scratch that one off the list now um, I'm going to show you the software that you can use to program the radio with uh, that'll be coming up next so stand by for that so the uh, program that we're going to use to program the QYT 
KT 8900D. It's called UV 4 band. That's the program. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and close this window and open the one that we that I've already set up. Okay. So here are the channels. There are other videos, there are other channels out there that have how to do this on their channel. I just thought I would add this in here. Um, just like the Woshan and the Bofang and the Hing Ting and the Wing Wong and all that stuff, you got to make sure that you have the correct COM port. And in this case, um, it's always, at least in my experience, it's been COM4. Um, so it shows error, that means I don't have the, the uh, cable plugged in yet. So I'm going to plug the, uh, that tip ring sleeve thingy over here in the back of the radio. And we're going to take the USB end and plug it into the laptop. Okay, and then Windows is going to make that sound. Then what you want to do is you want to go to Settings, uh, Control Panel, and let me see here. Uh, up in the search box you want to type DEV for you know, device manager, it's one of the first things that pops up. Device manager. Then you're going to go down here to ports, where it says COM and LPT. And you're going to see here that it says USB serial port COM4. Okay? So you're just verifying that that cable with the chip in the cable is on COM4. So we're going to go COM4, confirm. And then when you do that, the radio will, like, it'll restart, like, it'll boot up. So then you know you're good. That's how you know. Then what we're going to do is, um, since I've already done some manual programming to the radio, I want to grab what the radio has, not what my program has here, because I've been checking machines and deleting them and adding them as I've been checking it manually. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit read down here. And now it's, uh, you can see the progress bar across the bottom. So it's reading the program from the radio. And the bottom of the radio will say read. Okay, it says complete reading data from the transceiver. So now, whatever I have here is the gospel according to the radio. Now you'll see I have like an opening here, channel 43. So that was something I took out of there. Um, the program allows you to uh, put in your receive frequency, transmit. you got to manually do that. This is not like... KG UV Commander, where it automatically puts it in. It's certainly not like the Kenwood software, which is the THF6, which automatically puts offsets and everything for you. So you got to work this one a little bit more. Um, and then over here, you can name it. It's kind of like. Um, now, it's kind of like all the Chinese radios. You get five characters or six characters or something like that. Yeah, six characters. So you name it. Um, you put your offsets in. You know, make sure you you know make sure you factor in your offsets. You put your CTCSS. You know, encode means again, just like in my older Woshan videos, encode means 
that's the that's the the number or the the PL tone in order to open up the receiver. So encode for you means your radio is sending that tone. Encode means sending to the repeater. Decode means the repeater is sending back a tone and and you can listen to only that repeater if it is so equipped. What I tell everybody and what I highly recommend is that you do not have a decode tone unless you go to the repeater owner and you verify that yes, that repeater does uh, send out a decode tone then you would only be able to listen to that repeater, which is nice on days when you have conditions. So if in doubt, leave all the encode off. Now what you can do is you can go to each machine and you can manually check, you can go into the repeater and then you can set the same tone for decode. If you hear nothing in your receive, that means that machine doesn't send uh, a tone. So uh, this here is the QIT KT. Uh, you can search it up on Google. KYT KT 7900D four band mobile two way radio program software. It actually works for the 8900D. So that was the workaround. The other program was Crapola. I mean, you loaded it up, you had question marks all over the place. I wasn't even going to mess with it. So I did a little bit of research, and this program works for this radio. Again, you get what you pay for. It's the same thing with anything else in life. You get what you pay for. You pay $80 for a dual band radio. Expect to get $80 worth of performance. Okay? That's just the way it is. If you're okay with that and you understand that, don't expect this radio to do what a, you know, a 400 and some odd dollar Yezu quad band is going to do. It isn't going to do it. Your best bet is to just acknowledge the fact that this thing is limited in what it's capable of doing. And if you want to save some bucks, there you go. You save some bucks. You got yourself a dual band radio. Uh, next couple videos coming up, I'm just going to show you the antennas that I worked on and got them flown. Uh, it's really kind of crummy out today, so we'll work on that and I'll show you those antennas. So, uh, I hope you got something out of this. Again, the KT8900D, it's made by QYT, I believe it's also made by TYT and... God knows however many other manufacturers over there in China. They're all made in one place. They're just branded differently. So there you got. You got the 80 some odd dollar dual band commercial radio, blah, blah, blah. There you go. Have a nice day.